Uh, I can't accost the encyclopedia for not giving me an answer. Why don't you know? What use are you? You must have me confused with the copopedia. Who's who's the copopedia? I think I need to talk to him. You, sir. You're the copopedia. Uh, be the encyclopedia and the copopedia. I need you. Flex that shit. All right, clap your gloved hands. Let's get in there. There truly is a, there truly is a time for everything, even for yellow gardening gloves. He nods approvingly. However, they are lacking hygienically. I suggest you get in there in a limited capacity. All right. I'll ask you when I need you to. For the most part, Maybe I should handle the contact, and you take notes. We just fill this in, right? Show you the red field autopsy form in your ledger. That is right. He nods. Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, loony, Rooney. Well, no, that's still, we're still fine there. Open your ledger at the field autopsy form. The dead man stares in silence as you crack the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... Hmm. Part 1, Assistant. That's you. Raphael, I can still lie. Alright, Harry Dubois. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings. Just lies there. The next box says, 2. Coroner's case number. KK5708030815. KK, Kim Kitsuragi, 57, Precinct 57. Followed by his his date and the time of arrival on the scene. He's indexed the case after himself, not you. That's because he doesn't want to bring up the messy question of your initials. Yeah. So this is the pissing match between departments, apparently. Shouldn't we file the coroner's case under me? Technically, I arrived at the scene before you. Except I don't even know when I arrived, so the loss of memory makes, makes me not useful. So let's just write it down. Next. Name. Nope. Date of birth. Nope. Age. Hmm. The man corrects his glasses. Roughly 50. Try 40. The damage is so extensive, it's better to err on the young side. I'm going to write around 42. He nods. Race. Mondial. Subgroup Occidental. As per your observation. Write it down. The pudgy mass The pudgy mess looks neither mondial nor occidental. It doesn't even look human. The next line says, As you read it, you think, That leaves out dark-haired mesk, sao, samarizian, kitretic, Lighter skinned occidental means this man could be Vespertine? Orangees? Messian. Those three are on the table. A solid guess, Mr. Racial Profiler. Uh <laughs> Sex. Fucky, fucky! The monster exclaims energetically. Male. Pig's gonna have sex. Fuck you can write fucky fucky or pig's gonna have sex. <laughs> Reminds me of all those let's play moments where you're about to say something out loud and then another word comes up out from the outside Either because somebody else says it or the game says it and then you act it just infiltrates your 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 sentence male No, does he look male with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face Date of death We're going to go with March 4th 51 What else he looks over your shoulder 9. Body infected by is non-applicable. 10. 
case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK57-0503-0815 Listens, motionless, with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. Evidence of treatment. None. At least not after the initial examination. What exactly is treatment anyway? Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. I agree, lividity points to a lynching. Then again, the right lividity is easy to produce if you know what you're doing. He places his hand on the dead man's chest, as if in preparation. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature. A holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform, then... We should start the post-mortem. Turn the page. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copier paper tries to answer why. External, ex external examination. Summary. Clothes. He begins. The deceased wears armor's boot, armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babardine, I think. Let's see. He turns the body on its side and check the underwear lab label. See, it's happening. Babardine, yes. Inexpensive, size M, color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more lurid. Write it down. The rest of the clothes the rest of the clothes have been removed post mortem by scavengers in order to get to the victim's ceramic armor. Officers are in search of the missing pieces. Removal of the boots is left for processing. It would be clever of you to omit the boots altogether, sire. If you are to keep them for yourself as you ought to, you have to you have deserved them more than anyone else. When am I going to get them? Patience. After the autopsy, before the body is taken away, there will be a window of opportunity. After the lieutenant has gone to sleep, I hope this has helped you, my leash. Drama wants to help me steal. Omit the boots. The boots has a serial number. He twists the dead man's foot. It is E50101000. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alphanumerical. The number is purposely concealed by the design. Write it down. Oh, I'm omitting the boots, then why am I writing down the... whatever. Ugh. Tattoos. He stands up. Feet planted on either side of the body. The upper torso is covered in a single continuous tattoo resembling a microelectronical circuit board. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files in document A1. The photo was taken on the scene using a Tregat Mini. The deceased has a belt for airlifting cargo around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow, length, Three meters. There is a buckle on the other end. He produces a measuring tape. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters, generally consistent with age 42. Preservation is good, ambient temperature below freezing. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with age. He kneels, he kneels in to get a better look. The deceased had male pot and baldness. The hair is combed back short. Touch the corpse's hair? Why?
Why does he want to touch the hair? I won't feel it because I'm wearing gloves. Am I checking for something? The hair under your latex fingers feels cold to the touch. Wet. Write it down. Short, light brown hair. Male pattern baldness. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Consistent with stones thrown post-mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity, Ching Chunk! The kid explodes. You think Chuno doesn't, kn doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was fucking max. Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. Lieutenant pays no heed. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest consistent with predation. High velocity? No. Ligature mark. The lieutenant produces a small folding knife. With the other hand pulling on the belt, he starts cutting into the polyester. The stench is horrid. After a while, it's obvious the material cannot be cut. The steel wiring, he concludes, breathless. There's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. You got just the right tool for that, the chain cutters. Good thing we got these chain cutters. Always good to think ahead. Now. He points to the rope, squeezing the dead man's neck. We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully. With as much precision as you can. See? My pig's gonna fuck his head off. No, he ain't. See, so looks blasé. Your pig's a boring fuck. Yes, I'm Kuno's pig, I agree. Jesus Christ. Oh. Look for a good spot to cut? The belt is equally tied around the whole circumference of the neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the yeast. The knot is the weak spot. The chain cutters fit there. Steady now. Like a flower arranger. Two cuts and it should come loose. Yay, interfacing. You saved me. I was really worried. I, I, still, I still have a decent chance of failure, but it's not so high anymore. Cut the belt off. Or, I'm not your pig, Kuno. You are, he says with calm certainty. You're Kuno's pig! That's all we get there. Stupid argument with Kuno reduced my ch- <laughs> uh. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, we got crit success. Okay. <laughs> the number of things that affect your chances in this game. After some deliberation, you sink the cutters into the knot, trying the tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together, sweat forming on your brow. Press down. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet. Revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. The lieutenant kneels closer, running his finger along the dark red groove until there's a gap. Rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the, in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. Emerging is observed on the skin above and below ligature mark. The mark is well produced, consistent with drop from one or 1.5 meters. Write it down. Chest is intact. He presses down on it. Normal contour. Abdomen is protuberant. Pelvis intact. Genitalia. He pulls down the man's underpants. Now it's gonna happen, see? I fucking knew it. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Let's just write it down. <laughs> back is symmetrical and intact. He struggles to turn the corpse on his side. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There, there are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. 
In addition, I see smaller residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. That's a lot. From wounds sustained over two, maybe more decades, dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. The scarring is extensive, way more than a law official's. Mm-hmm. He nods. We have a real museum here, of battles, wars. Last item, hands. He takes the man's right, uh, right hand in his, inspects it, then moves on to the other hand. Let him work alone. Hands are clean. He inspects the wrist. No sign of a recent struggle. Were we expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, the stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Oh. He turns to the side to breathe. It's not enough. He buries his face in the sleeve of his jacket. You hear a muffled voice. That's all for external. Well done. What next? He's having this much of a reaction from external. I don't know if he's going to be able to take it. Internal examination. Summary. Central nervous system. He says, then concludes abruptly. I have, I have nothing. Do you have anything on the man's central nervous system? Of course. There is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to the story. If I may add the moral of the story. And what would that be? He looks at you inquisitively. The, de the dead man looks too with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of his story. The brain is very vulnerable to compromises in its blood supply. The lieutenant grins. I think that may well be the, mor the moral of every story, officer. All right, N.A. Good. Musculoskeletal purge fluid is coming from the mouth. He gets close to the mouth hole. Eyes squinting from the stench. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hyoid bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it. Gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. You hear cracks as the lieutenant moves his sharp fingers inside the flesh, like the creaking of an old house at night. Yeah, jack that fucker off. The hyoid bone is fractured, he says after a while. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact, unremarkable. Back hunched, as if in prayer. Uh, back hunched, as if in prayer, he begins to pry open the dead man's jaws. Respiratory system. He stops to exert more force. Both hands are used. Oral cavity knows, shows no lesions. The victim has received dental implants, possibly from a combat wound. Mouth swollen, hemorrhaging present in, in mucose of lips and mouth. Dare I look inside? No scream, no sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again, straight in that mouth of his. Look deeper? That was a mistake. It's hard. Once more you taste stomach acid in the back of your throat. A concentra- a contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from your stomach and into your mouth. You're forced to swallow, just to keep looking. Inside you see darkness. Just a mess of meat and darkness. The lieutenant lets go of the jaws, the mouth snaps shut before you. Emerging present in mucus, he repeats impatiently. Write it down. Well, that wasn't really worth doing. <laughs> I was kind of curious what might happen. He wipes his brow. Hepato biliary. N.A. What, don't we have anything? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. Are you a... 
Hepato biliary expert. Hepato means liver and biliary, the gallbladder and bile ducts. Am I an expert in those things? Nothing in your alcohol soaked memory directs to having forensic expertise on either one. I don't think so. Neither am I. And that's it? That's it. NA. Same for toxicology and serology. NA. Both. Unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there. Reservoirs? No, but they do take obscure trivia. Uh, do they take uh, do they take obscure trivia and odd tidbits? The completionist in me wonders if there's something we could still do. Like a toxicology screening? He looks at the monster. At this stage, I doubt processing will find anything, even if he was brimming with cocaine, but still. You should add a request. At write NA and add toxicology requested. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the, fe in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with a hanging. Gastrointestinal. He breathes a sigh of approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. He looks around to the ground, the pool of feces there. This will do. Then he touches the corpse's bloated lower abdomen briefly and says, Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. Can you write it down? Omit the, vo the voila. What's next on the list? Description of injuries. Summary. Let's see. He tilts his head. We have bite marks, contusions on head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one, too. Be thorough if you want maximum results. Bite marks. He nods. Head. Chest and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? Beneath the description there, there are two boxes waiting to be ticked. The bite marks. Non fatal, post mortem. Agreed. Next injury? Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury, a stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! He has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Coagulated blood sticks to the scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes. Non-fatal, post-mortem. Right, next. What's the fourth injury field for? Nothing, just in case. Turn the page back. Ligature marks. Finish the autopsy. A dark red ab uh, abraded ligature mark encircling the neck, with a gap on the neck measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Write it down. Below the note, two customary boxes waiting to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side, awaiting your judgment. The ring around his neck is visible. I keep imagining him alive and moving. Think for a moment. There's time. Don't rush.
We still have the question of did he die from the hanging or did he get hung after he was dead? He was carried here. Going by what we've seen, he was carried here. Hmm. Yeah. He was carried here and there's no signs of him resisting. He didn't try to fight off the, uh... He didn't, like you said, that they said that there's no sign of clawing on the neck. Like, he didn't go after the, the rope that was hanging him. It's like he didn't resist at all. No one says that they heard him resist or scream or say anything or do anything. Non-fatal. Post-mortem. Hmm. The lieutenant falls silent abruptly. A column of cold air encircles you, rising slowly upward in the shape of a courtyard. Bordered by cracked plaster, windows, seagulls, perched on air conditioning units. A small green enclosure in the middle of a corral of tenements, cape side apartments, whirling in rags in the fortress wall of Terminal B. Above it, a thin blanket of coastal stra stratus clouds. Higher yet, coalition airships guard over 21 cordons of the Special Administrative Region. The air is crisscrossed with radio transmissions. The hair on your neck rises. Was I right? You were. Why do you say that? He tilts his head. I'm serious. I don't think this was the injury that killed him. Okay. Why don't you think it was fatal? Why were in his hands tied? A big man like this, I would tie his hands when marching him to the gallows. Honestly, I'm not sure they weren't marks. I'm not sure there weren't marks on his wrists. That part got blurry for me. Look now. You haven't, like, cut him open or anything. The stench. He covers his mouth. But you're right. I was ready to call this. Now I think we should leave it empty, at least for the time being. But boom Also, I leveled again. I'm so fast. I have every single one of these now. Boop boom. Magnesium-based life form. We'll see what that outcome turns out to be. And then I'll start unlearning some of these, probably. He produces a small... small black plastic roll from his jacket, a body bag. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. First, how did it go? It was a... He looks for the right words. An irregular field autopsy. We did not establish cause of death, which is supposed to be the goal of an autopsy, but personally, I do not see this as a parameter for success. We also requested a toxicological screening that was thorough. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks, if we're lucky. I would not hold my breath. Then, given the state of the decay here, I consider establishing the victim's ethnicity a minor success. What else? We were thorough with a list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field, op field autopsy. What now? I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Farborg. We're about to copy. We're processing. He looks at the dead man one more time. Then at the slip of red paper in his hand. Then the corpse again. You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. Oof. Plus one, didn't establish probable cause. Minus one, stop wasting time, you're smart. Uh-oh. Come on, legendary. <sighs> you run your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso, with the swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. Look under his fingernails like Kim already did. 
throwing shade at me right now. Look at his pants again. He pulled down his breeches. Marbling is present around the crotch. The, pe the penis has shrunk, crawling halfway back inside him. There's nothing mysterious or noteworthy there. Baggots can't get enough of that dick! Did I just finish my finger guns? That was fucking fast. You think we missed something? Yes, there's something we're not seeing. Okay, well... We're in Livo Mortis here. He's disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination. And we need to do it fast. Okay, where do we find a fridge for the body? The bear? Hey, a wild smile appears on his face. Wasn't there a giant ice bear sarcophagus below the building? He points towards the commercial area. An absolutely colossal fridge, still plugged in, literally in the shape of an ice bear. Yes, now, I've rarely been dis disappointed by the size of a giant ice bear fridge, but I think we should still take a look at it first. Make sure it's big enough before we carry him over. He closes his notebook and cracks his neck. Let's move. With every hour, whatever we're looking for in the de deceased will become harder to find. Oh my god. So I think I just created a situation where... Yeah. Huh. Because I think this entire game might take place over the course of like a week or two. Like, it takes a long time for a day to pass and it can't be infinitely long. So, uh, anything that... Whenever the game says it'll be weeks before we get results, I assume that means we won't get results, basically. I could be wrong. There could be a time skip or something. Just at the rate that, at which these days are going by, this game would have to be hundreds of hours long to take weeks. And I don't think it is. Uh, so based on that, anything we can do to keep the body around probably might be better. So if we can take him over and refrigerate him, I might get like a white check that I can try again every day or something like that. And I might be able to finally make a breakthrough on that legendary check. Because whatever we did are doing here, we're missing something still. Eh, finger pistols. <clears throat> snap, snap, baby! Turns out guns aren't that much for protecting as they are for attacking people. If you want to protect people, really work for them. You have to whip out your signature dual 9mm Villiers finger pistols. Who needs a real gun anyway? That conversation you just had? It would have gotten better if you did snap that better than bad boys at him. Note, 9mm dual finger pistols do not count for an actual weapon in a gunfight. What? Safety's always off, baby. Plus one reaction speed. That's great. So that's good. That's just a bonus to one of my good stats. So that's good. But also, I have a new weird passive where my suggestion gets stronger if I don't ha hold anything in my hands. That's interesting. That's specific. Hmm. What's my hand right now? Yeah? These are technically not even items that give me stat bonuses, so I don't need to hold them in my hands all the time. Whereas this gives me inland empire and empathy at the cost of authority. This gives me physique at the cost of morale, only if I use it though. Not if I hold it. Hmm. So I, th I might have to unpause then pause again, but... Suggestion. Bonus from thoughts. Yep. As a result of not holding anything, anything in my hands. Not a bad passive to have, just to stack on top of everything else that's happening, I suppose. But yeah, we also don't want to send the body to, body to processing because I'm trying to get the shoes. Yeah. Yep, check twice to see whether you're done with all the corpse-related tasks. After you've sent the body away, you can't take it back. Alright, so let's check out the, that giant fridge then. And it's weird surprise use we're gonna have. And hey, if uh, the boots disappear while he's in the fridge, I can blame that on... Uh, how do I get there again?
I guess it was this door. If the boots disappear, we can always say that somebody stole them. Which was always true anyway, I guess, but yeah. Like somebody might have snuck in and took the boots off the corpse. They took every other piece. Wow, what a useful shortcut that takes us right here. The bear's eyes are still glowing red, watching over all the ice cream wrappers hidden inside the belly. So what do you think of this fridge, Kim? Looks big enough for two corpses. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it is capacious. And cold enough, too. Your visual confirms. You could fit two more bodies in the ice bear fridge. That's ominous. Almost like that might come in handy at some point in the story. Shall we go and get the body, then? I'll take the head. You take the feet. The stairs won't be easy, but we'll manage. Okay, let's do this. That's a lot of sound. The body is heavier than you expected, and stinkier. It takes about half an hour to get him down to the basement. Then ten more minutes to stuff it in the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork. Beautiful, he says, wiping his hands on his handkerchief. A dead body in an ice bear fridge. This is some of the best police work I've ever done. Really? You think it's good work? No, not really. Look at that. What have we done? We stuffed a dead body into an ice bear fridge. The story does not... The story does not leave this room. We had the best. We did our best with the means at our disposal. Did we, though? He sighs. Okay, maybe we did. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection under controlled circumstances. Inside the icy realm of the ice bear fridge, the corpse stands, slumped, waiting. That's a significantly higher chance to do the refrigerating. Refrigerating. Tell me something, dead man. How do you like it in the fridge? I like it a lot, brother. This really is your finest hour. You're a genius. A regular Coppolangelo. Cop... Coppolangelo. Oh, Michelangelo. Got it. But cop. Immediately telling Kim to take it away would be hilarious. It's like, well, now that we've done that, time to waste more of your time. Come on. Perception. Now, before I do it, I need to maximize my perception points. Apricot chewing scented, uh, chewing gum scented one. August 2nd, early last summer. You're getting off the streetcar in Le Jardin, east of the river. Her father and mother are middle class. The nylon of her little jacket rustles next to you in the dark. Little autumn leaves. Her heels click on the pavement. You're walking up to the gate in front of her parents' house. She takes out her chewing gum and you kiss her. A feeling like electricity flows through your whole body. Immediately you know that you've entered a completely different world. Plus two perception. Betrayal lingers everywhere. There we go. Yeah, it's a gamble. It's definitely a gamble, focusing on these thoughts instead of just buying skill points directly. But each one of them suggests some form of storytelling or character development. And they might affect dialogue choices and skill checks, not just by having points that they change, but also the way that some of them seem to uh, be dialogue specific. Like how me doing my... Um I think it was the Mazovian socioeconomics? No. No, derealization. Like this one, unlock I think this one, it, it'll, it'll, some of these take a skill check that's really, really hard, that's really specific to that specific thought, and they make the, and they give you a huge bonus against that skill check, making it suddenly doable. So some of these unlock story, some of them just are story in them in themselves. In fact, all of them kind of are. Uh, but also, some of them might even give you better stat bonuses than the skill point would have given you in the first place. Which in this case, like, 
This is decent. It's it's a plus one, so it's one skill point right there, which is what I spent to get it. But then the other one is a potential plus one again, but then this one is like, boom, that's two skill points. And it's a useful skill. Perception. That's one of, that's one of my good ones. Yeah, I thought I, I thought I had a negative. Wait, did it really just get that specific? That's amazing luck. Perception's what I need right now. And I, I backed out first because I was going was gonna to change out my gear to help out. And I happened to get a plus two perception bonus just from my, my thought alone. I'm a lucky fucker. <laughs> just happens. All right, let's get my blue glasses off because they're bad for my perception. Whereas visual calculus might be helpful right about now. Nothing else affects my perception. All right, I put I put my corpse spying glasses on. Eighty-three percent, boom! Look at that, look at that. I don't like the stop wasting time. You're smart one. That's a bummer. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yeah. Your arm reaches out, and your eyes close, as if by their own volition. It's dark, all around. You feel cold, dead flesh through the latex glove. It's right under the palm of your hand. What is this? His face. His cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a rubber spider, your gloved hand crawls in his features. Everything is silent all around. Crawl up his nostrils? They're swollen shut. You really need to push to get in. Push your fingers in his nose? Only the little one fits. The flesh changes shape as you bore in, searching for something in the cartilage. Thing you're looking for, it's not there. Crawl out, spider. This is incredibly morbid and Kim's watching. <laughs> uh, put your fingers in his mouth? The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. Play with it. This feels right. The tongue moves freely in the cavity. The mucoil of the mouth is slippery, fragile, even through the latex. From the soft meat, teeth are budding. Hard pearls of bone in the gums and in the back of the mouth. Can you feel it? You're so close. Rip his jaws open now. Look in. Open your eyes and look. A vision of black and dark red death, pried open by your hands and studied and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from his throat, and there in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate, you see a hole, barely visible in the human eye. It is... It is swollen shut, almost vanished, no larger than the 0.4 centimeter in radius. The edges appear darkened. An abrasion collar! This is what we're after! Abrasion collar. Abrasion collar. He looks in. There's a pen in his hand. His notebook is open at the co copy paper. Abrasion collar. An abrasion collar, known as an abrasion ring or an abrasion rim, is a narrow ring of stretched, abraded skin immediately surrounding projectile wounds, such as gunshot wounds. I, was, I had the feeling it was going to be a gunshot, but it didn't have an exit wound? Did it only hit his- did it hit his neck bone and stop or something? Or did something else happen? Hmm. Touch it ge with your finger gently. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. Put your finger in? Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage, wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his wound, reach into his brainstem. Brainstem? Yes, that's what this part is called. <laughs> Thanks. Feel around first. 
The basal, the basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. This man will never sleep again, never wake. Push deeper. Your yellow fingers slide into the remains of the limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. This is what he used to regulate his emotions with. There's a cavity, cut right between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Push deeper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching towards the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, but the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. Wriggle in. Your fingers reach towards the skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cord jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper. Until you feel it on the tip of your finger. Ice cold. Ice cold, serrated metal. Its edges cut right through the latex and into your finger. Am I getting- did I get cut? Or do they mean cut as in like I just feel the pointiness or something? I feel a, I feel a solid object right under the skull. Can you... Can you get to it? He searches his pockets for something. Inspect the skull first. There's a tiny crack. A protrusion in the cranium, right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it from the inside. The object that is there stopped just short of the skull. In the... In the... Encephalus. Knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. We have the makings of a very small exit wound here. The lieutenant leans closer. Come on, interfacing. This is what we're good at. Oh my god. Precise spot of exit wound. We've nailed this, and it's my best skill, isn't it? Because I'm a touchy boy. I am the one who touches. Do I have an 8 anywhere? Nah. It's perception, reaction speed, and interfacing. Those are my god stats now. Shivers is catching up, though, despite all reason. <laughs> Might put up another point into that when I have free points. Come on. Do not crit fail me. You pick the option. You pick the object between your index and middle finger. It feels sharp, like metal. With your face twisting from pain and concentration, all you need to do is just... Got it. Good. Good. The fridge is in the background buzzes with excitement. Slowly pull your fingers out. The inside of your head feels cold and smooth like a glove as you, as you pull out. Sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth. The garden glove is covered in, in blood right up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower. A blossom made of lead. A bullet. The lieutenant put, uh, puts a small bag marked evidence under it. Drop it in. The bullet falls into the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, Unknown caliber. Rifled. Some kind of brittle alloy. Fractured on impact. Can I have it? Of course, you've deserved it. The lieutenant drops the bag in your hand. It feels light. I bet that goes in my category. Where I can't go into that that me that menu here. Hopefully, it goes into the the uh, the analysis category where I can interact with it and maybe have another conversation with the bullet. <laughs> he turns to his notebook. We need to add an item to the injury list. Injury number four. Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate, back of mouth. I, ki I, I kicked some ass today. We did it. High velocity. Temporary cavity and brain tissue. Small exit wound on the occiput. He underlines the injury, forcefully. How does that sound? Sounds about right. 
Opinion. Fatal injury. God damn right. Click, click goes the pen. And one last thing. We should ap append, amend injury three. Ligament mark. New opinion. Non-fatal. Post-mortem. Treatment. He's proposing the bullet was the real cause of death, and the hanging an attempt to conceal this fact. The ligament mark. The fractured hy hyoid bone. It was all treatment. Yes. And the belt around his neck. The hanging. Even dragging him into the yard. All of it was done for this man after this man was already dead. Agreed. He nods. I have had my doubts since you showed me the tracks. Why did they carry him over? Why not march him, I thought. There was no satisfying explanation. And his hands weren't tied. There's been so many weird things. His hands weren't tied, he was carried here, and he didn't try to- he didn't struggle when he was hanging. Secret task complete. Find the bullet before you get fooled. Yay! <laughs> oh, I like that. Secret tasks. That's fun. I think I encountered a uh, secret task early on. This is a new one. 15 points of good cap- of good cop. But boom This is fun. There have been other signs too. Small things. We were right not to assign hanging as cause of death. As the perpetrators expected we would. No such luck for them. There is of course the very real possibility he was both shot and hanged. Maybe they shot him while hanging him? What the fuck? Who would do this? That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them a little easier. Why would anyone do this? To hide something. The real killer? The real motivation? What happened here? I think I need to wash myself. Yeah, new task, wash off the death smell. Oh, he nods. You really, really do. I am glad to hear you say that. Your room in the Whirling and Rag should come with the bathroom. Be sure to make use of it this evening. This is just too... On one hand, it's like, maybe interesting dialogue comes to this. On the other hand, I'm like, this is a stupid thing to say. <laughs> and it feels like it affects... Like, saying stupid things has, has a consequence in these games. Maybe the bullet holds more answers. Yes, we should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. What happens next? We bag the corpse and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. I can transport him to processing myself, but I will be gone for the rest of the day. You'll be gone? What should I do in the meantime? Work on the case, tend to personal matters. Try not to do anything too dangerous. An officer needs backup in a neighborhood like this. I'll leave the choice to you. And one more thing. He looks you in the eye. Great work, detective. After you bag the corpse, Kim will leave the party until tomorrow morning. You can do side tasks and even the main case, but it might be more difficult. Plan his exit accordingly. Huh... Work alone for the rest of the day is worrying. I mean, he's in the fridge now, and... Yeah. Kim has repeatedly told me that I should not expect anything to actually get done. And if, any, if anything comes back, it'll take weeks, and we're not likely to get a lot of intel regardless. So I'm kind of... I think I want to leave him in, I think I want to leave the corpse in the fridge overnight. Two things. One... I don't really want to be without Kim for any big stretches of time. I think the loading screen or something already said that he leaves at 21 o'clock now that we have our rooms est <gasps> established, so he's going to leave. 
Uh, so if I want to do some stuff without Kim, like talk to the lady on the boat, then I can already do that. I guess visiting that guy at his room always happens without Kim, because it happens at 21 o'clock. Uh, so I can do those things regardless in the hours after he goes to bed in the evening, where I can wander for a bit. Uh, so I don't need to actively get rid of him. Meanwhile, him being gone is just kind of a bummer. I want to I want to hear his reactions to things. I want to hear his take on stuff. Also, he helps me do things on a regular basis. Uh, so I, I want to do it as late in the day as possible, but not today because I want to be able to take the boots. I, I wonder if he'll suspect me, though, and if he'll think it was me. But at the same time, I wonder if the boots come in handy. Like, I have the option to reconstruct this entire suit, and I'm kind of curious whether constructing the suit might help in the story at some point. Like, you can go old Judge Dredd and have a big suit of armor that might actually be necessary if things go down. We are dealing with a conspiracy where there are a bunch of people that are stronger than us and more numerous than us and have more power than us and control the entire situation and don't want us to find out what we're on the verge of finding out because we're actually... We're, we're breaking through the lies that they've established at this point. And, and so far, one of us has a gun. <laughs> it's not great if, we, if things do go bad, so having power armor might be helpful. Not that it saved them. I don't know. The fact that there's this massive game-long quest to get all the different pieces of the armor, it feels like a waste to let the, the boots get away, I guess. Let's close the door. Thankfully, he doesn't seem to question the fact that I'm not opening the door. There's the bullet. The fractured bullet. The bullet mushroomed on impact. It now looks more like a fanciful jacket button than something that could pierce skin, flesh, and bone. The bullet is safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Kim has filled out the label on the bag with the item number, case number, and date, of location, date and location the bullet was found. What do I do with you, bullet? What? The lieutenant steps closer. I said, what do I do with you, bullet? Well, if I... If I was the bullet, which I am not, which I am not, I would say, find the weapon that shot me. Good idea. Find the murder weapon. If we find who owns it, we will have likely found who used it, possibly to kill our victim. In conclusion, the more we know about this bullet of yours, the better. Feel the bullet. The squashed bullet has some sharp edges where the, the jacket has split open. It feels cold, even through the bag. You wouldn't ordinarily have cause to handle jacketed bullets. The citizen's militia uses cast bullets only. Little pebbles of metal loaded from the muzzle, usually in a cartridge. Inspect the bullet closer. The jacket of the bullet is made of a yellowish metal. It is blossomed out to reveal a dark gray core. The base of the bullet is close to five millimeters in diameter. Look at the jacket. You can just about make out a few striations near the base of the bullet. Little hairlines, linear. It feels standard. And the core? It's quite destroyed. Some of the fra uh, fragments are still lodged in the wound. What can you say about the bullet so far? It's a jacketed bullet, close to five millimeters in diameter. A jacketed bullet. Okay. It would have been shot from a military-grade breech-loading rifle, not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. Highly unusual. The people of Revacol haven't carried breech-loaded weapons like this for nearly half a century. Even the RCM uses ordinary, unjacketed, conical bullets. This is... Strange. Very strange. I like this officer. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. We need to find the gun that shot it. Hand-eye coordination. Legendary. But I'm legendary. <laughs> Try to determine what type of weapon shot this. Ooh. Plus one from Encyclopedia. Plus, uh, Encyclopedia said this came from a breech loader. Plus one, you're aware of this name of the, of the antique rifle you found. Plus four, you have a similar rifle on hand. Wow. Wow, I've like done everything right. 
in the right order somehow by accident. I found the fridge, which is how we had a place to store the body. I found the rifles over in the corner in this room, which I otherwise like, could have not found easily. And I already, like, last episode talked to the old man, or, well, well, the episode before this autopsy, I talked to the old man that could identify the rifle, so, ba-boom! Don't you nat, don't you nat fail me. A rifle. Revolutionary period. Your bullet looks to be an old 4.46 millimeter from the surplus left over from the turn of the century. Probably an antique or retrofitted an antique. Oh my god, this is so validating. Me going in this weird corner and wasting my time and looking at the weird game developer's office and shit like that has oh, it felt like such a weird side tangent. And now I'm, my weird bullshit's being validated by the fact that that actually gave me the knowledge I need to solve the case. Ba-boom! <laughs> Make. The 4.46 caliber was widely used with the Bell Magrave rifle, a Revercolian manufacturer. The BM dominated the battlefields of the Insulindian theater of the Anticentennial Revolution 50 years ago. Incidentally, you have such a rifle with you. The dusty old thing you found hidden in the basement below the, co the commercial area. It's unusable, sadly. If it wore, the bullet would probably fit the chamber. Is anyone still making these rifles? No. But Zieliger, a major firearm manufacturer, ended, with the sur ended up with a surplus after the war. So there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. The quality was appalling. Who uses Bell and Magrev rifles these days? Antiques enthusiasts, guerrilla fighters in distant countries, a few lucky jamrock bangers. You're looking for the same thing you found in that location, weapons cache, only in working order. Hmm. The lieutenant jots something down in his notebook. What are you thinking, bullet? I think I know where this came from, dangled the bag thoughtfully. Okay, and? The, the shot probably came from a Bell Magrave rifle. An antique. That makes sense. There can't be that many breech-loading rifles floating around in March days. Or anywhere in Rivercall, really. Why not? Sure, there's some arms trafficking, but the laws prohibiting the use of breech-loaders we inherited from the monarchy have been effective from what I've seen. Some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muzzle-loaders once they've trained with military-grade weapons, but they realize it's worth it in the end. Prohibiting peacetime law enforcement for, to front-loaded rifles is a policy enforced by the Moralist International in all the nations of the Real Belt. Worth what? Getting shot? Imagine if everyone, cops, citizens, had access to firearms that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. After the first shot, the second, third, and so on, come much easier. But back to the investigation. And the game is criticizing modern weapons and the Second Amendment and so on. Yeah, imagine a world where your gun could just keep shooting shot after shot and what that might result in in a society. It's almost like the Second Amendment was written in a time where we had cartoonishly less effective guns that you had to manually load and like clean out with like a stick and shit and it was a whole process that's why they had the whole don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes line was because they had shitty guns that would fire like once and then there would be a huge reload period and so they needed to make the first shot count if they wanted to win the battle <clears throat> Seems we're looking for an antiques enthusiast. Doesn't seem that likely, but we'll check out all possible leads. Next step, finding the gun itself. The bullet has nothing more to say. Put it away. Yes! I got exactly what I was hoping for from that bullet. We have a lead! The case can start now. And those people are definitely lying to us for more reasons than one. Mm -hmm.